Hey there, this is Alana with Praying Christian Women here with Jamie. We're glad you guys joined us. How are you, Jamie? I'm doing well. How are Good. you? Good. Good. Yeah, it's going to be fun to dive in today. We're talking about organizing our prayer list and drawing parallels to organizing homes. Um, if you're worried that we're going to like make you feel ashamed for having a cluttered mess in your house, don't worry. <laughs> I think Jamie and I have both seen our houses at their normal, which is sometimes cluttered. <laughs> sorry to, take, I'm just sorry to take call you on a you tour out, right but... now of my that's right, that's right. closet. Pull the camera down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The closet that I podcast from right now, it's not in the best shape. No, this is all just very theoretical. That was just, yeah, kind of, kind of a theoretical parallel has nothing to do with uh, shaming you about your prayer list organization or your home organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, I love the way that we can look at other things going on in our lives, like what we do with certain personal development kinds of studies that are coming out, or all of the personality studies that are coming out, and basically just, yeah, ask, how can we apply these principles to our prayer lives? I know I do that anytime I'm reading a book now, like, oh, okay, the book might be about time management, or it might be about saving for retirement. I'm like, oh, this, this relates to our prayer lives in this, that, and the other way. Well, and that's what I love about this podcast is it's just an opportunity to focus on prayer, even if you mm -hmm. don't, you know, uh, have a perfect prayer life, which none of us does. Mm -hmm. um, just taking time to talk about prayer and to yeah. think about it just gets your mind thinking in those ways so that you can right. just kind of use the things in your life to to build on your base of of your prayer practices mm -hmm. and disciplines mm -hmm. or ideas yeah. and it's just fun it's just it's it really yeah it's like the lens that you look through. Like, do you remember when you're like yes. super, um, super at the early stages of falling in love and everything you see, you see through the lens of, oh, I want to remind myself to tell him about this or, oh, he would love this picture. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's always our lens. And I think because you and I have been podcasting about prayer for so many years, that's kind of become our lens. Like we were meeting our son's middle school youth group leaders are from another church and we didn't know them very well. So we had them over for dinner and turns out she's a really big fitness kind of person, you know, like she's run the hundred mile kinds of, you know, double ultra triple marathon sorts of things. Wow. And she was talking about how it's really not been until the last little recent bit that they're taking exercise. So basically her thing was the exercise that we learned, like when we were kids in gym class and PE was based on science that was only using white adult men. And so yeah, she's gotten so into goodness. all of these studies about, you know, exercising specifically for women or exercising specifically for postmenopausal women or premenopausal. And, you know, immediately I'm like, oh, that's exactly what we talk about a lot is, yeah, how do we bring our womenly gifts into our prayer lives and things too. Is that a, is that a good segue into our uh, big reveal? I think we have a kind of big ish reveal today. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely do it. All right. So Jamie and I have written a book. I think you've heard us mention it, perhaps if you listen, but uh, the the main crux of our book is exactly that. It's time for us to stop feeling like we need to pray like somebody else and learn to pray like ourselves. So it's time for us to stop looking at your next door neighbor or your best friend and be like, I wish I could pray like that and learn how to pray exactly like you were designed to pray. And yeah, we're, we're just excited. We don't have a release date yet, but you can read our, at least our first chapter. We'll probably be releasing a few more chapters over the next weeks. Um, you want to tell them about that? Sure. About the, just where they can access that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of you already know that we have a Patreon page, which a lot of podcasters do this. It's a way for you to support the podcast by pledging a certain amount per month, whether it's a dollar, three dollars, ten dollars, there are different tiers depending on um, how much you want to support. And so we have had a Patreon for quite some time, um, but we're actually, we're going to be merging Patreons with Alana's Fiction Patreon to be able to offer you some more perks and for her to be able to um, kind of gift you with some of her Christian suspense novels, which is really mm -hmm. exciting. Um, but another thing that we're planning is to release 
chapter by chapter before our book is published. So we're looking at publication in January-ish, I think is when we were aiming for to make it available, but you will get that much sooner. So you'll be probably in the next couple of weeks, really, we'll be dropping mm -hmm. chapter one and yep. we'll just kind of, well, by we the go, time this comes out, it's probably up. Oh, that's I true. Would assume. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So by the time we'll just make sure that happens. So Hello, people in the future. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and if you are a current Patreon su supporter, I sent messages to our old Patreon, but just so you know, if you have been supporting praying Christian women through Patreon, we are now shifting to a different, um, page but you can mm -hmm. access it from the same place so if you're yeah. interested in having access to our first chapter of our new book you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash partner and that will take you to the patreon page that you need to be at yeah and that's going to help support what we do here that's earmarked for praying christian women mm -hmm. our hosting fees all of that kind of stuff so we're excited to see you there and if you happen to kind of just heard about praying christian women through being on the patreon when it was just for my christian fiction hi welcome <laughs> I'm Alana, this is Jamie, and here we go. So today we're going to be talking, like we said, about organizing your prayer list, drawing parallels to just kind of home organization. But let's go ahead and start with prayer and all that good stuff. God, thank you so much for allowing us to come together again and talk about prayer. Thank you for this picture of organizing our prayer lives as being similar to organizing our homes and just help us to gain whatever it is that you have for us today. Lord, I just pray that um, if there's any guilt in anyone's heart about their prayer life, about their home, about anything, if there are any hangups, just remove those during this time, Lord. I just pray that we would be able to just come into this speaking with grace and just looking to take out the lessons that you have for us in a positive, forward-moving way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our verse of the day is from Matthew 25, 23. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And I just chose this because I feel like the whole issue, our prayer lives, uh, it's just another form of stewardship. Like I feel like we've been given this gift of prayer. And so for me, as a person that is not prone to organization at all, I I just feel like just pr our prayer lives are are a form of stewardship. And so for yeah. me, it's really been helpful because I'm not very good at organizing my home either in general. And so when I start focusing, just like we talked about, when I when I start focusing on, okay, how can I um, make my prayer list, what are some, some tips and how I can make my prayer list, um, either organized in such a way or, um, focus on it in such a way that it, it maximizes my individuality and my strengths. Um, mm -hmm. that really, I, I just think it helps me be a better steward of my prayer list. And I yeah. think that we can actually, we'll talk about this later, but I think you can actually increase your capacity for prayer as you practice prayer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and as you maybe implement different things, but our Absolutely. number, yeah, but I, I think our number one disclaimer today is everybody's different. So mm -hmm. some people will wither under intense organization of their prayer lives. If someone came in and said, here's a prayer journal, I have right. organized it to the hilt for you. Mm -hmm. so you can maximize your prayer life. Some people would just wilt and think, oh my yeah. goodness, what a horrible millstone around my neck. Right. And that's okay. So that's why I just want that to be in the background. All these things that we talk about, if it doesn't resonate with you, then find something that does and don't feel like these things all need to be incorporated into your prayer life, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and going back to the topic of stewardship, I find those types of verses to truly be like the absolute most challenging in scripture. Um, this one here, and then also to to him who has been given much, much will be required. Yeah. And I think sometimes we 
we like to say something like, uh, we, we kind of want to be grandiose. We're like, God, why haven't you given me this really big prayer burden? Why am I not the kind of Christian that you wake up because the president's about to be assassinated and I need to pray against it to stop, you know, or why don't you wake me up to pray against thwarting a terrorist attack? And I kind of think about it in a way, kind of like this verse, if you're faithful with little things, then you'll be faithful with much. But some of us are wired in a way that, yeah, if God gave us a huge, grandiose prayer burden, we feel as though we would be all over that. But if it's just a little burden, like, hey, I want you to pray every single day for the salvation of your next door neighbor. And maybe you don't even really particularly like them. Like, oh, pass. You know, I'll wait till I get the better, more exciting. So, you know, it's kind of like a, a picture of journalism, uh, aspiring hopeful where you take the assignments you get and if you do a really great job with those even if they're really silly like you're covering the the cupcake parade and you want to be breaking the you know cracking open the crime syndicate in your town you start with the cupcake parade and you do that well and you prove that you can meet deadlines you prove that you can be relied on and I think our prayer assignments are like that too and so I love thinking about okay maybe you want to be a you know a the kind of prayer who truly does change history I do but are you being faithful to pray for the things that feel maybe a little boring and tedious as well yeah. And I, I think we sometimes think of it as like a reward punishment kind of thing. Like, well, God's punishing me by not giving me more, mm -hmm. but God is blessing you. God knows how you're wired. And right. maybe for this season, this is all that you can handle. And mm -hmm. if he gave you something, you might be so overwhelmed by either the, the quantity or the scope mm -hmm. of the prayers that you know, that you would end up shutting down because we yes. are so easily paralyzed in our prayer lives. And so, yeah. you know, it's grace and it's love that God's like, you know what, this is where you are. I'm meeting you here. Mm -hmm. And just like anything in our lives, it's great to strive for more, but mm -hmm. we have to also be like, okay, but what I am right now at this moment is enough. Mm -hmm. What can I do mm -hmm. where I am? Like you said, not looking ahead at, oh, I would rather have these prayer burdens or yeah. I wish my list was this long or that I was leading right. a prayer meeting of hundreds of people yeah. or something. Right. But to be content where you are and like you said, faithful with whatever it is in your mm -hmm. immediate sphere mm -hmm. and that that's okay and that's good. It and is. That's it is good. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are definitely certain prayer assignments that would break me, you know, and I am glad that God hasn't given me those. <laughs> and then there are other prayer assignments that don't feel like work because they are, they, they do hit so close to home. You know, you don't need to, um, again, let's go back to the person who's just beginning to fall in love. They don't need to be reminded to pray for that person, right? They don't need to be reminded to ask God, you know, about their futures together and things that just happens because of the way we're wired. So, you know, in our podcast, in our book, in our discussions, this is what we always want to drive home. Pray according to what God has given you and yeah, don't compare yourself to somebody else. No. So our just for fun on the topic of houses and organization, what are you loving about your home right now? So right now I am, I'm loving our apple trees. Oh and yeah. It's that time of year. They had a very bad, well, so last year we had a bumper crop of apples mm -hmm. and, but they were tiny because there were so many, our trees uh -huh. need to be pruned and mm -hmm. I have been putting it off because the last time we got it pruned, I don't think they knew what they were doing and it like oh, it no. really stunted the production. Yeah. But last year it was too much. So none of the apples got beyond like just a little over golf ball sized. Mm -hmm. And I, they were okay for like, uh, some of them are good for baking, but they, because they're, I guess, I don't know if it's just where we live or the type of mm -hmm. apples, but they don't last very long. You cut into mm -hmm. them, they're almost instantly brown. Yeah, um, yeah. Some of them hold up well in baking, others don't. So we juice a lot of them though. We've pressed cider out of a lot of mm -hmm. them, but they didn't juice very well last year. There were oh. so many of them, but they were like yeah. wood when we chopped them yeah. up and we started to uh. press them. 
but this year we had very few apples because I think when you have a huge crop one year because you haven't pruned well, it kind Uh of depletes them for the next year. Right. So we had one or two trees that did pretty well, but then the other two had virtually none. Ah. Uh And but the apples that we did have were we almost got as much juice as we had <laughs> yeah last year with like out of fewer twice as many. Yeah, but I it's love just that fun. yeah I just love seeing the trees. I love um just you know the the process of juicing them. We used to go to like a local place that does like community mm -hmm. cider pressing, mm and last year they were closed and didn't have it. So we ended up investing in a small press ourselves. -hmm. So we've been doing that as a family, mm and -hmm. it's just fun. You know, it feels yeah that's like a fun such a family fall memory activity. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mm yeah. -hmm. How well about and you? fall is so short here that it's Oh, nice it is. to be able to enjoy it when you can Yeah, it <laughs> is. yeah How about you? um i'm enjoying our i enjoy so much about where we are right now it's just it, the views are pretty we still have orange on the trees Oh, yeah. uh the leaves haven't blown off yet so yeah it's not super cold quite yet so yeah I like being outside watching the dogs run around they get their zoomies out and go and sniff everything and then I also I like this time of year because there's a little window which is rare in Alaska where it's still not really 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 cold but it does get dark enough to see the stars Yes, I love it. so I'm hoping to get like one good night of stargazing with the kids in before it gets too cold because in the summer it doesn't get dark enough to see stars we're finally now to where it's getting dark right around bedtime um, if it's a warm enough clear enough night and we like turn off all the lights and let our eyes adjust, I think we can enjoy a really nice starry sky. Well, the first thing that came to my mind was your greenhouse. I covet your greenhouse. So are you still able to have plants in it now or has it gotten too cold? My greenhouse is a really sad story, Jamie. Oh no, I didn't mean to bring it up. <laughs> I'm sorry. one of the, one Oh. of the things over the roof blew off. One of the windows fell in a windstorm Oh no. and So you, oh. yeah, it Oh. got too cold in there. Um, yeah, we, we won't talk about that <laughs> next Oh my year, goodness. Here we <laughs> are. next Cause year. that was my, I'm like, I know she's going to say her greenhouse. I'm so sorry <laughs> to bring that up. Bummer. okay. Okay. It's not like it's a sensitive subject, Oh but no. anyway, <laughs> we're Okay. going to be talking about organizing. Oh, did you have something else? No, I was just going to say, but Okay, your good. plants, every time I see, every Oh, time of we course. get on zoom, Yeah. I'm just like, and you've given me some cuttings that I'm actually not killing and they're Mm -hmm. They starting look great to produce when you've more sent little, me pictures. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're producing more little shoots. I'm very happy with my plants. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm loving my plants. I'm loving, we have those coleus, which are those like bright, bright lime Oh, green yes. that get super bushy for some reason. They love being upstairs where my husband works and he really likes them. So that's been kind of fun. I'm like, how much of your wall space can I steal just to put plants on? <laughs> Oh. Right. If so, you kind of get him to like the plants in uh there, huh. and then Yeah. you can, yeah, add add more. Exactly. Exactly. So anyway, we're talking about how organizing our prayer list is like organizing our home. Um, I'm going to add one more just for fun question. What would you say is like your biggest struggle in organization? It can be home organization or just organization in general. What, what do you feel is your biggest struggle? I have two struggles that are pretty big. Number one is having the vision to create order. So Mm-hmm. taking a big blob of stuff, which my husband is amazing at. So whether it's in our home, he creates shelves or storage units, or let's put this here and here. I can't even create the original structure to make that organization happen. Mm -hmm. Right. You kind In of need a, yeah, you need a foundation. Right. So like in terms of a prayer organization, Yeah. it would definitely be, I would not be the one that has my own, you know, like journal that I Right. creatively, You would, I would yeah, need to you wouldn't make borrow the template. ideas Yeah. from You would other buy people. the journal that has the template. That makes a ton Yeah. of sense. And then my second issue is keeping, maintaining it. Cause I could have my husband, oh, I feel so bad for, for Matt. He made these cabinets in our like shelves and like a pull out thing in our, in our pantry, which we don't have a lot of pantry space, but we have Yeah. these four cabinets that everything goes in and it 
is great. And he even organized it. I was away at a hockey tournament with one of our kids. And while I was gone, my daughter was like on the phone, you're going to notice some changes when you get back. Uh, and when I got back, my whole pantry was organized. And ooh. I thought, oh, it's wonderful. And he had done this. And I was so excited. But it has become a bone of contention because I oh. cannot maintain it. And okay. when I go to the store, I try mm -hmm. to like put the things, but then I'll be in a hurry. And so I'll just right. shove the cans in. And so, yeah. So basically, yeah. I'm hopeless. I can't create the organization <laughs> and I can't maintain it. Well, maintenance can be hard too because other people are using those pantries. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's um, true. Scott gets really frustrated when he can't find a cooking utensil he's looking for because, you know, we we set up the kitchen so that like these, like everything does have a specific place, but there are some things that like, is a colander a bowl or a pot, right? Like <laughs> it could look a tiny bit like either. And so the kids don't really like, sometimes they'll put it where the bowls go. Sometimes they'll put it where the pots go. Right. So maintaining is harder when you've got a whole family, you know, getting into things too. It is for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How yeah. about you? What would you yeah, say? Yeah, probably just that struggle? maintenance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Continuing like I on. can, I can get the pantry to look pretty nice, and I find it relaxing to do. But then you know, a couple days in, it's kind of a mess again. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, for me, I look at organization as um, a hobby and not really a lifestyle or a chore. So if like Saturdays tend to be my day where like I I don't get on the computer. Um, I usually just put something on my headphones to listen to. I don't like sitting around all day. So I'll usually do stuff like that. You know, oh, this pantry hasn't been tidied up in a bit. But for me, it's less about I must have an organized pantry because I know in a couple of days it's not going to look much better than it did. But for me, the process of putting things in order is relaxing. And I think it's kind of stress relief for me because my brain can feel really disorganized. And so when I have a task of let's take something that looks really cluttered and let's make it look really nice, that feels like a sense of accomplishment. But like I said, to me, I treat it more like a, a hobby or a pastime and not a, a have to or so it's not a chore and it's not really a lifestyle. It's not like if you were to open my pantry today, you'd be like, wow, I can tell she keeps this up. It really is just a no, I, I want something to do to relax and I don't want to just be sitting down. So that's kind of how I treat it. Well, I think so much of what we just talked about could be applicable to prayer. I mean, I just feel like mindset is huge, obviously, in so mm -hmm. many things. And there's so many areas where I admire your mindset about things. Mm -hmm. And I've learned from kind of how you view things because a lot of our struggles with things come from how we look at them. And right. so if you look at your prayer list as I, I almost, you know, we hesitate to call it a prayer list because it feels cumbersome to some mm -hmm. people to call it mm -hmm. a prayer list. It feels like mm -hmm. Ugh, this list. If I don't do this and God's going to be kind of like, if I don't organize the pantry, my husband's going to get irritated. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how about your prayer life? You know, your, your relationship yes. with God, mm -hmm. your communication with God. And yeah. if you approach your prayer life with this idea that it's a joy and that mm -hmm. it's a privilege and that it's mm -hmm. relaxing, that it's something yeah. that brings you, you know, just this sense of taking the burdens that you've collected and yes. just laying them at the feet of God. Then mm -hmm. when you go to this idea of kind of organizing your prayer life, I'm going to start calling it that instead of your prayer list. Yeah. Then it becomes more of, like you said, it's, it just is more of a labor of love. Like, you know what, this mm -hmm. is my, uh, this is my life. This is my relationship yeah. with God. It's like going back to the, the relationship with someone you love, mm -hmm. finding time to be with them, um, yeah. looking at your schedule to find out the next time you're able to be right. together. You know, those things yeah. are a joy when you yeah. love someone. It's not a have to. Well, and yeah. I think about it too, like, I think the pantry example is a really good example of what I do. Like I was talking to um, a coaching client this week and, and she had the great question, like, what do you do when you just feel really overwhelmed? But it's not by like one specific thing. Like there's not one problem to fix, but you're just kind of filled with this overwhelm. And we, we kind of walked through. So what I do for overwhelm is I take everything that's in my brain 
And I just lay it all out on some paper. I do like a big brain dump. Here's all the things I'm thinking about. Um, here's all the things on my to-do list. If it's more of the emotional overwhelm, here's all the things I'm worrying about, right? And then and then you kind of sift through it. And I feel like that's kind of what we do as pantries. Let's take it all out to at least like see what's there. right? And then we lay it all out before God. And then we just start putting it back where it needs to go. And, and what I love too about that, like, so let's say we're talking about organizing our to-do list in a prayerful way. So you dump everything in your brain that's on your to-do list. And then you just kind of, you take inventory of it. Like that's another useful thing because like we're, we're doing groceries just usually twice a month. My husband will drive in and we'll do a really big grocery order. And yeah, sometimes if we're not really well aware of what's already in the pantry, we'll order more of the things we don't need and we'll forget the things we do need. And so sometimes even that organizing, that taking everything out and just laying it out is a way to take inventory of where you're at. And I think that's really useful. Like imagine um, imagine if you and your husband once a quarter had a set aside time where you're going to list, like let's just think about everything that we have um plates spinning in, right? Mm -hmm. How's your work? How's your health? How's your parenting? How are your friendships? And how's your spiritual life? And you just kind of do an inventory with each other of that, right? Like I kind of see that as the taking everything that's cluttering space in your brain, laying it out, and then you get to put it back where it belongs. So going back to the to-do list, it might be, oh, here's the things I really don't need to worry about a lot. They're going to go on the way back. Here's the things that need to be more front and center. I'm going to keep them up here. Oh, I noticed that I'm lacking in this. So I'm going to make sure to address that. And I feel like the tangible benefits of taking everything out of a pantry, just an example, you know, we could do this for closets, garages, drawers. At some point, you're going to get gridlocked if you don't take everything out to at least see what's there and then decide to put it back in. Um, and I feel like for our prayer life, sometimes we kind of need to do just a, a spring cleaning for our brain. Here's everything that I spend mental energy thinking about. And then you get to decide, you get to put it in its little cubby. <laughs> These are things that I can say a popcorn prayer about and just assume that God's going to take care of it, right? Like, oh, I told my neighbor I'd pray for her dog. Boom. I prayed for her dog. It's not going to take up any more space in my brain because I just did that. Versus here's the things that are so front and center in my mind that I know that if I don't address them, it's going to fester, right? And so then you decide, okay, what do I need to do with this? Do I need to talk it out with somebody? Do I need to seek therapy? Do I need to spend prolonged time with God about this thing? So it really is like assessing what's there and then deciding what partition you're going to put it in. I love that. I'm taking notes. <laughs> Perfect. I love well, and so, I mean, this is very, very practical in terms of just, you know, doing a brain dump. What are the things that I'm yeah. thinking about? What are the things that burden me? If you have an existing prayer journal, you can, mm -hmm. you know, take what's on there or a prayer yeah. list or whatever it is, mm -hmm. sticky notes, get those all together in one place, put all of it together and kind of like the cans in the pantry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might find that there's like overlap or duplicate stuff that you're like, yeah. well, you know, this is pretty much this. I can put this all into one category and it's exactly. pretty much the same thing or mm -hmm. um, so one of the inspirations for this topic was a um a podcast i listened to it's called a slob comes clean we had dana on our podcast she was episode 203 um so she's um she's the author of organizing for the rest of us and some other books where she does not have the kind of brain that she has a creative brain and she mm -hmm. kind of it, her i relate to her podcast so well because she's like you know i'm not the kind of person that loves to organize or loves to clean or is good at maintaining mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this is how i get to a point where i'm functional and yeah so much of what she says is very applicable to our prayer lives and you can listen to that episode it doesn't really go into a lot of the parallels per se mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. But the one thing that she kind of talks about is there are two sort of two steps to organizing your home. And the first is 
to purge or mm -hmm. what I would like to say in terms prune. of a prayer list is prune. prune <laughs> yeah. Prune like when you're talking about the apples, like I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how oh, many, see? We, look, another example. We could have done an episode on pruning your prayer list, just about your apple tree. It's That's so right. applicable. It is. It is. So go ahead. Yeah. So like the first few examples or parallels that come to mind is, yeah, if your prayer list, the P the, so right now let's talk about, I have a certain number of people or issues that I want to regularly pray for. Um, I, I truly believe some of us are meant to have longer prayer lists than others. I think that this is one of the, again, to him who has given much, much is going to be required. Yeah, we all I have also, different sized plates. Yes. You told me one yep, time. Yes. And I also believe that we can grow right? So you might start your prayer life praying for one specific person. By the next year, hopefully that can move up to three to five. By the time you get to 30, <laughs> it, you might find this is a little, this is a little much. This is not going to work for me because kind of like your apples, I'm getting tons of apples, but they're itty, 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 bitty because I'm not truly investing into anything. So, you know, if we look at intercession is kind of a spectrum. You have a popcorn prayer, which is what we call help Jamie have a great day. And then you don't think about praying for Jamie beyond that all the way to think about um, how intensely you would pray if your loved one was in a car accident, getting life-saving surgery. And all you can do is wait for them and the doctor to tell you if they are going to survive. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And, and then there's everything in between. And I, would say that we're not meant to pray super thoroughly, like really, really, really thoroughly for dozens and dozens and dozens of things, at least the majority of us. So in that case, again, we need to decide what compartment, and I'm going to put these things into, am I going to put them into the, hey, please help this person. So maybe you start your day with a list of 10 people but you're just praying a quick blessing. Help my son's school teacher have a great day. Help my sister to, to have a great time at work. Um, things like that. And then you've got the, the small number of things that you pray for really, really, really deeply. I think a great way to look at this is our friendships. Some of us have like one best friend that we dump everything onto and some acquaintances that we know and like. And that that fills our social capacity. Others of us, not me, want to have like 20 best friends and 500 acquaintances. Like some of us have a higher capacity for that kind of thing. But this is what we're talking about. It's asking God, okay, how much should I put on my plate? And which things should I treat as kind of the popcorn? I want to touch on these, but I'm not going to necessarily every single day pray blood, sweat, and tears over these. And what things am I going to really go into intense intercession for? And I think one more thing that we need to remember is just because something's good doesn't mean you need to do it every day. I needed to learn this with my kids in homeschooling when they were really little. It was like, okay, anything that's good for their learning, we got to do every day and we got to do right. a deep dive. And that's yeah. exhausting when you're four years old, you know? Not to and mention so, for your teacher, your mom. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so- it turned into, you know what? Studying art is a great thing to do. I'm going to make sure we touch on it twice a month, right? Like I'm going to get us some really nice picture books where we can look at some great paintings twice a month. That feels okay. Forcing us to do that every day while we're also doing spelling and phonics and reading and math. Like, no, it doesn't have to be every day. So sometimes those deep dives are for those kind of more prolonged times, just like you don't need date night with your spouse every day, you know, but if you never do it, that feels like a little bit of a lack unless, you know, you're carving out time together in other ways. So um, I kind of, oh, pruning, right. So pruning your prayer list helps you to really hone in on what God wants you to be praying for so that you can be more effective. And there can be guilt, I think, in that. I really, I think that there can be guilt in pruning your prayer list because it's for someone that loves prayer that's a prayer mm -hmm. warrior it's like what mm -hmm. just stop praying for this person wait what if yeah. i if i don't pray for them who's going to pray for them mm -hmm. but you can start off with some very i mean you can go into it prayer prayerfully of course once you've done your mm -hmm. dump you can go through and do some very prayerful but practical mm -hmm. things too so maybe start yes. with the practical okay 
which of these is no longer relevant? You know, if yeah. you're praying for Susie mm -hmm. to get married because she has been praying for a spouse for 10 years and she got married last year, you can take that off. You know, that doesn't need to take up space. Or if you have, you know, so-and-so's dog had surgery, pray right. for healing. Well, that was last year. It's okay. Right. The dog's <laughs> yeah. fine or not. Right. And then you don't pray for that anymore. So um, that's horrible. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's fine. All dogs go to that. heaven, right? That's right. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, but then, then you get into the next layer of, okay, then there's this issue of, all of these prayers, you've got prayers you've been praying maybe for decades yeah. that have not come to pass. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you're inclined, you can go to God with those too and say, God, mm -hmm. am I still supposed to be praying for this? Or is this something yeah. I'm released from? Because there are prayers that get answered in the negative or mm -hmm. prayers that, you know, maybe God is wanting. I mean, there are so many Christians that God has access to to pray for certain people and things. And mm -hmm. it can be that he's calling you out of a season of prayer for something. And that's mm -hmm. okay. If you're not comfortable with that, that's okay. No one's going to force you to take something off your list. But yeah. I, I think that going into practically and prayerfully pruning that list mm -hmm. can just picture that apple tree in my front yard yeah. that last mm -hmm. year was full of too many apples. And so... Yeah that tree got burned out so really yep. last year mm -hmm. none of the apples made it very far and this yep. year there are none there's i mean there mm. was not a single apple on one of the trees so, your poor tree I know. <laughs> which means okay. next year's going to be great year. exactly <laughs> so we'll prune it in the meantime so it doesn't overdo yeah. it next year yeah. But, yeah yeah just think of it as an investment that pruning is an investment in the long term in, in the long-term health and effectiveness of your prayer life. And Absolutely. it's not a selfish thing. It's selfless to want to look to God because if you look at the root of why do I feel this burden to pray mm -hmm. for all these things, sometimes that burden is like, well, it's pride. It's, well, it is. if I don't pray, is. then who will? I mm -hmm. am the one praying for this. Take that yep. focus away and just allow God to to be the one to direct you. Another, exactly. And another angle that you can come at it from if the actual pruning has been done and it either didn't make a big difference or you're just really uncomfortable with that is pray for God to help you prioritize. Yeah. And and then organize that way where you can just be like, okay, you know, I've got all this stuff. So it's in terms of the the home example, you've got the one issue of pruning or purging so you get rid of the clutter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then the next step is organizing and so part of what you can do with organizing it's like if you had a closet full of stuff piled in door slammed so that when yeah. you open it, there's an avalanche yeah you could fit all of that stuff in that closet if you had a system of shelves and tubs probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'd be able to have it at least compartmentalized and labeled so you have these yeah. big categories so yeah. maybe you take the remainder of your prayer list if it still feels like a lot and you do that kind of cataloging of okay god yeah. what is my top tier what are the ones I, okay i think of sandy in your i've been thinking pen. of sandy this whole time <laughs> so tell us about how sandy organizes yes. her prayer list in the kennedy for those of you that don't know alana writes christian suspense and she has a whole series probably your most popular series yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. the kennedy mm -hmm. stern series which is awesome so yeah. tell us about Sandy. The yes. Character. Okay. So, and for those of you, like I said, this is another reason why we've combined our Patreon so that you can get um, some of these books at, at no extra charge and I get to share them with you. So Sandy is the pastor's wife in the Kennedy Stern series. She plays a very, um, very large supporting role. She makes appearances in a lot of my other books as well. And her, her prayer routine I would go so far as to say it's too organized for me, but I love the mentality behind it. So Sandy's got a, a like an, a recipe box, it looks like, right? And it's super pretty because she, she really likes having things flowery and nice looking. And so picture like a recipe box with little tabs. Here's the recipes I use all the time. Here's my dessert recipes. Here's the recipes I only pull out for the holidays, that kind of thing. And so basically she has names of people she wants to pray for on index cards that she keeps in this box. Some of them are in the daily section, some are in the weekly section, 
and some are in the monthly section and they can move from section to section. So as an example, she might have her kids in the daily section. And so every morning when they're doing their family devotions, they're praying for all the names on there. Um, in addition, in her daily section, she might have uh, her best friend who's going through surgery that that's urgent, that needs daily prayer for four weeks from now, when the recovery is well underway, she's going to move that to the weekly section, right? And so then the weekly section is just kind of, okay, here's things that I want to make sure I pray through at least on a weekly basis. So it's kind of like, here's some of the things that I'll pray for by Monday. Here's some of the things I'll pray for by Tuesday. And then once those feel like they're, once there's a sense of relief, those get moved to the monthly section. So it kind of is a way to visually organize by priority. And again, some people might feel guilty about this, but we think of even, even Jesus did this in a way. He had the people that he was the closest, closest to. Uh, he had Peter, James, and John, and then he had his 12 disciples and then he had all of his other followers. He loved them all. He blessed them all. But some of them did get more of his time and attention. And I don't think we're supposed to feel guilty. I think that's how we're designed. Like, I am always going to spend more time helping my child with their math homework than I'm going to help the neighbor kid with their math homework. Do both kids need help? Yes. Are both kids as equally loved by God? Yes. As a mom, am I going to spend more time on my kid? Yes. And I don't think we should feel guilty about this and having sections for areas where we still want to pray for them, but we're not going to give them like front and center space. Cause like I said, there's only so much room on our plates for that kind of praying. I think it's a gift of love because otherwise you just forget about them. Right. So it's not that we're kicking them off the curb saying, I'm never going to pray for you. It's okay. I want to make sure that I don't forget to pray for you. And I want to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed as an intercessor. So I'm going to put you into this monthly batch. Yeah. And no, I think that is such a good way to do it because then you can do this prioritizing of these are the pressing things, you know, mm -hmm. that are, and, that will a lot of times, you know, the most pressing things will probably be the things closest to your heart. And, yes. you know, some of the other things are things that, okay, I want to definitely touch on these, but not necessarily mm -hmm. right every single day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I think that is so good to be able to have that kind of compartment, you know, organizing thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another concept from, from Dana's podcast and her books that she brings up regularly is this clutter threshold and it goes back to our organization uh i'm sorry our our individuality yeah when it comes to everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she talks about how she grew up in a house that was always very tidy mm -hmm. but her mom had tons of knickknacks all over the place mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and just stuff all over and she is able to maintain that and so Dana felt like as she got older that she could have a bunch of stuff too. And she's like, mm -hmm. I just came to realize my clutter threshold is, it's yeah. the idea of everyone has a different size plate. Yeah. So of course our prayers are not clutter, but. But our idea, thoughts can feel our cluttered. Our thoughts can feel mm -hmm. cluttered. And so mm -hmm. if you're a person that's like, I have tons and tons of stuff on my prayer list, but, or, you know, or in my, in my prayer life, not yes. my list, but, um, <laughs> it doesn't feel like a burden, then mm -hmm. that's fine. That's yep. totally fine. Just like yep. the person. And, and likewise, when we talk about organization, some people have like, you know, um, all the organization systems intact and everything in its place mm -hmm. and every place for its thing or whatever the same. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Other people don't like that. Other people right. are like, I would rather have a pile of, of things here where I know where that pile is and that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And other people, you know, it, it really, yes. your style needs to come into play here. So absolutely. I'm so glad you mentioned that, you know, because there is a lot of room for just personality and preference. And actually your story about Dana and her mom, there's actual generational differences like yes, boomer women are knickknacky by generality. It was just kind of, you know, for, for who knows what reason, you know, when you think of somebody with curio cabinets with lots of things in them, you think about a boomer aged woman and, yes. you know, so if you're in that age category and if that applies to you, I think it'd be really interesting to ask yourself, hmm, 
why do you know what does this tell me about me what in 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 all good ways right what is what can i learn about my personality by liking this millennial so you know women in their 30s ish um it's gotten way more minimalistic you know it's white walls and you know everything's kind of one one tone and there's not a lot of clutter and it is it's very interesting and of course there are you know these are just generation generation differences it's not as though you know if you're in your 30s you have white walls and no curio cabinet and then uh what they're saying now is that the gen z so the people kind of just graduating high school and college like there let's put everything up on the walls let's you know let's have everything and again it's yeah what does this say about you because I know for me I do um other than my plants like some people would say that I have I, I hate to even say it, I have too many plants in my house I hate cluttered. to even say it no. <laughs> but but for me there's a sense of comfort and love similar mm-hmm. I'm gonna guess to a 70 year old woman who's got these knickknacks actually I can tell you from personal experience I have a friend who fits that demographic and super knickknacky but every single knickknack she has like she's the kind of person I forget what the animal is but she's like she just she collects pigs or you know whatever the animal is and so right. people know she loves these little pig knickknacks and they give them to her and she she remembers like oh 30 years ago this person that I love gave me this to celebrate that so for her there is a sense of love and joy and actually that reminds me of something else I wanted to mention about organization and that's bringing a sense of gratitude into it all yes. you're taking everything out of your closet and instead of being like I hate how messy this is instead change it to I am so thankful that I have these things I'm so thankful that I have this space I'm so thankful that I have the time and mental energy to take an inventory of what I've got and to allow that to really infuse your organizing. Yeah, no, I think that that whole mindset thing just goes back to if you approach this with a have to mentality, mm-hmm. it is going to feel burdensome. And if you approach it with a, okay, this is a blessing, this is going to end, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's going to be enjoyable. But I, I have another organizing the home kind of thing that Dana talks about, which is if you think that you just have to wait to begin the habits, the daily habits, because there are two different things. There's organizing and then there are the daily habits that go into maintaining your home. So with our prayer lives, there is the organizing aspect and then there are just the daily disciplines of prayer right? And, and just going through the motions. But if you feel like you have to wait to get into those daily routines until everything is perfectly organized, you're never going to get into those routines. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with your prayer life, but you're waiting to get totally organized before you get into like just Mm -hmm. praying every day, like, you know, or every week or whatever it is, you're never going to, to probably get no, there. that's so true it's kind of like the woman who's like well I'll start eating better once I lose some weight yes. <laughs> or I'll start exercising once I lose you know some weight it's like you, yeah. you got to start with something or I'll go to the gym once I'm a yes. little more in shape and I'm not embarrassed yeah. to be seen at the gym yeah you know? exactly yeah no, go ahead and and take whatever the first step needs to be like everything needs to start with something to get anywhere and there is friction. Like that's how walking works. There has to be friction or walking wouldn't work, you know? And so, mm-hmm. yeah, it might make you feel a little uncomfortable. Um, and that's good. Yeah. Well, another, um, there, there are a couple of other just kind of general takeaways that I was thinking about from the, the home organization side mm-hmm. of things, um, is there's kind of, the the container rule is a Mm -hmm. big one in in Dana's podcast where she talks about if I have a drawer like an art drawer for Mm -hmm. art supplies that drawer is the is is all there is and what she used to do is she Mm -hmm. would fill it until it couldn't even be closed and Mm -hmm. then she would overflow into other areas yeah um so she has kind of a one in one out 
policy. If she okay. puts a yep. new supply in, she takes something out that maybe has gotten old or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as you kind of get past this initial organizing into the maintenance phase of, you know, just kind of maintaining the systems that help you to stay a little bit less overwhelmed in your prayer life, mm -hmm. the kind of one in one out without being legalistic right. about it. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's not like mm -hmm. an old paintbrush. This is a person's life <laughs> that you're praying right. for or an issue. But yeah. if you kind of make a habit of just kind of doing that check in, like, oh, I told you know, Mary, that I would pray for her today. Mm -hmm. Let me put her on the list, but let me just scan the list real quick. Is there anything that I could take off, you know, just right. kind of, or, yeah, get into that? Yeah. Yeah. Like with Sandy's example, before you add someone else to your daily list, move somebody to that weekly list. Exactly. You know, because right. otherwise you, mm -hmm. you do overtax yourself. Just mm -hmm. like, I mean, imagine anybody, it doesn't matter what size of a home you're in now. Imagine moving to a place with double the size. The first month, you're going to be like, we have so much space. Isn't this amazing? I guarantee that by a year and for most of us a lot sooner, yes. we are not going to feel as though we have any more space than we did when we had half the size. Like uh, nature hates a vacuum. If there's empty space, it gets filled with something unless you're really deliberate about making sure, nope, I've got one drawer for this <laughs> and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think about when my husband and I, I think sometimes longingly about when my husband and I moved into our first home uh -huh. after we got married and we had an entire front room with no furniture. It was literally yeah. empty. And, yeah. and downstairs is where we had our couch. We had two couches. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we had one couch and two uh -huh. like camp chairs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so like... It was like that the whole year that we lived there. And I yeah. remember some church people came from a church uh -huh. that we visited and we invited them in. And Matt's like, are they going to think we're so weird? Right. The, the room that you walk into when you first come in the house is completely uh -huh. empty. And, yeah. But, you know, it's, it, yeah. Anyway, I, I think about that now when our house mm -hmm. is bursting at the seams after yep. 10 years of living here and not yep. enough one in one out. So I'm kind of, I think that's yeah. a really good way to look at it. And, you know, I think about like when I do the pantry, sometimes it's just to make sure that there's space, but maybe twice a year, you know, I'll look at expiration dates. I'll see what, you know, we need to use up or I'll be like, you know what, we got this for a recipe that sounded great five months ago. It's not something like it's a canned ingredient that we're probably never going to use. Um, you know, and so I'll make a pile to donate to the food bank. And in a way there's, the reason we resist doing that, it's this sense of, but I might want it later, mm -hmm. right? There is kind of a sense of scarcity and fear, or, you know, it's a sad example, but the woman who has grown several clothes sizes post-pregnancy and 10 years later, hasn't gotten rid of her, her skinny clothes because, right. because of that thought, I might be able to fit into this later. And right. if that inspires you, to get healthier, um, you know, or, or at least to get skinnier, right? Because skinny doesn't always mean healthy. If that inspires you to get healthier, then go ahead and keep them there. But if it just makes you feel bad, consider getting rid of that. And um, so when I, and, and gifting it, right? That's what I think about. Instead of hoarding things that we no longer use, let's gift them. I feel like there's such a, a flow of blessing. And if we, if blessings come in and we don't let anything move out, feel like we're creating a blessing dam. Do you know what I mean? That's eventually just going to stop up. And so even when we're pruning our prayer list, I can think of like, I am going to release this, this issue that had been on my prayer list, but instead of it being, but now who's going to pray for, or, but, oh, God might be upset if I do this instead, almost treating it as a gift to the world. Now God gets to gift this blessing to somebody else um we did an episode about marie kondo's method didn't we i think we might have at least and, we've, we've definitely talked or at about least it. talked about her and spiritual you know, decluttering we did yeah, yeah. and yeah. there are you know like I, again it's not a book that aligns with christian values 100 percent, but there are for sure applications to our prayer life and i really liked her idea when you're getting rid of something giving a um basically thanking it or, you know, in the Christian sense, thanking God for what it did mean to you. So you're getting rid of the, um, 
the craft supplies that you got five years ago and never use. And instead of feeling, oh no, like I wasted all this money or, oh, I'm, you know, I'm stupid for thinking that I could find time for myself. Thank God for what it meant to you at the time. It was probably a fun thing to purchase and then it served its purpose. And then you get to gift it on to someone else. Um, I think we can do that with our prayers. As you release a prayer burden, there can be a sense of gratitude and a sense of gifting it to somebody else, right? Now somebody else gets the blessing of having this on their more regular prayer list kind of thing. And the other thing is, I think you could also look at it as an act of faith. If God, yeah. I mean, does, yeah. did God not hear all of those years of prayers or those mm -hmm. weeks of prayers or days yep. of prayers? Like, mm -hmm. of course he did. And if he's giving yeah. you release, then maybe he's saying, I'm already at work. Yeah. Time it's for okay, someone else. You yeah. Know? And I'm already yeah. at work and, and, and. I've got this, this is, this, yeah. this thing has been put into motion and I've got it from here. Maybe there doesn't even need to be someone else praying because you have sown mm, right. that prayer energy into this thing. And yeah. God's like, well done, good and faithful yeah. servant. Thank you. Yeah. This thing is already, the, the seed has been planted and now it just yep. needs time. So yeah. anyway, that's, that could be an act of faith, releasing it, knowing that God is sure. at work. And humility, because mm -hmm. sometimes there's this sense of, oh, I can't get rid of this prayer burden because God needs me to keep praying for this. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if it's the top of the list, I think that we should have that sense of nobody's going to pray for your kids like you do, as an example. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time if God's calling you to let go of your prayers and you're stubbornly holding on, I think sometimes that is because of pride. It's because, well, no, if I stop praying for this, then you know, something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, anything wanted, else you want to bring up? I just wanted to mention that spiritual decluttering uh, episode is oh, episode yeah. 84. If anybody's interested, we do mention Marie Kondo and just how to, de how to declutter your spiritual life. So we probably touch mm -hmm. on some of the things that we talk about today, but in a different framework. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever like very specifically been called to release a prayer burden and what was that like for you? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. In theory, I feel like I have, but I'm thinking about a specific example. I might need a little bit of time to think mm -hmm. about that. Uh, well, okay. So this is a short term prayer burden, mm -hmm. but um, I was praying there, my mom, I've mentioned many times, my mom had dementia. And when she was at the point where my dad was no longer able to take care of her by himself, um, in his home, we, so we, he and my mom moved to Las Vegas where my husband and I were, and she ended up going to a memory care facility there in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. And I was at their home to help the transition. So I was pregnant with our first kid. My dad and my mom and I were flying to Las Vegas from Maryland, which was a long flight. I think there were two. And um, it was, it's hard to explain how difficult it was to handle her, you know, like to, mm -hmm. to, to just practically yeah. get her on a plane. Aww. She was very restless. Um, yeah. she was in a wandering phase. Okay. She was very easily agitated. She was confused. She didn't know Aww. what was going on and we didn't know how we were going to keep her from right. just having a meltdown on the plane. Oh, like, no. It was very, very scary kind of. And I just yeah. remember the feeling of dread i already had i think i was Aww. it was november i was due to give birth in february so i was yeah i just remember being hormonally just exhausted mm -hmm. and mentally and yeah and i just remember i went i actually went into the bathroom not even because i had to go but just to like yeah take a break because i didn't want to mm -hmm. i wanted to be strong for my dad because he was just right. at his end of his rope and he even said to me I'm all prayed out. I don't even know yeah. what to pray or how to pray because I yeah. just don't even, I don't even think there are words anymore. I've been through yeah. so much. So mm -hmm. I went in that bathroom and I just, I was like, 
it was the next day that we were going to fly. And I was like, God, please, like, I need your help. I don't even know what to do. Yeah. And I just, I got this, um, just, God just gave me, it is going to be fine. Mm. And it was one time in my life where I just felt like, I don't have to be praying as we yep. get on the plane. Yeah. I don't have I don't have to pray anymore about this because yep. he's assured me that he will do what he said yeah. what I asked him to do. Yeah. And I came out and I told my dad, I was like, it's gonna be fine tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah. How do you know that? And I said, mm -hmm. I, I know it sounds a little crazy, but God just mm -hmm. told me. Like he told yeah. me. And I I can't think of a time when I've been more sure. Wow. And so I mm -hmm. slept well, I woke up, oh, I had confidence cool. and almost expectation. And it was so cool, like just how serendipitous everything was. Aww. Like there just happened to be like a a wheelchair right where we needed mm -hmm. it and an attendant. Yeah. Like, oh, let me take that. And yeah. she was so happy. Like she was joyful wow. and peaceful and Okay. Um, and she slept the entire, cool. yeah. So all of that to say that was kind of a short term. I know that for me, right. they've been praying mm -hmm. for years or, and I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't know about whether I've had those longer term ones, but yeah. there are just times when I think God I gives you that. that blessed assurance, like yeah. I'm in this and I've got this pray mm -hmm. for something else, you know? I, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you? I think it, well, going back to your story real quick, I think it shows trust. It's almost like a, a kid who's like, mom, are you, are, is there going to be money for Christmas presents? And the mom says, yes, you'll have a Christmas present. But every day they keep asking, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, it's going to hurt your feelings. Eventually it's like, I said it was going to be okay. Yeah. Sometimes I think this is going to sound so weird. Sometimes I think that letting go like not praying for something is your way of showing faith at least mm -hmm. in very certain circumstances like that one mm -hmm. interesting that's so cool um i had kind of a similar thing happen so in general most of the time that my prayer burdens are released it, it kind of tapers so going back to sand it goes from daily to weekly a couple months later it's there in monthly mm -hmm. a, a couple months later i can go and look a year back and be like oh i guess i'm not praying about that as fervently as i used to mm -hmm. um but i had a, a case like kind of like yours where it was right after scott and i had broken up and before that i had already thought that god had kind of told me that we were going to get married and so not only was I like pretty heartbroken from the, you know, romantic sense, but I was spiritually pretty confused. Yeah. I was kind of like, okay, God, what happened? And it was right before I graduated college. I think my roommate had already gone home because um, like seniors could stay an extra month and I graduated or an extra couple weeks until commencement and I graduated early. So my roommate was already gone couldn't sleep. I woke up maybe like at 11 at night, <laughs> went to bed, you know, at 10, woke up at 11 and then just spent the night praying. And basically what I was doing, this, this kind of goes back to our prayers of transition, how like you can close a season by praying thoroughly for everything about it. Um, so I was, you know, I was just kind of praying for every single person I could think of in a way, probably to just kind of wrap up my season of being a college student. It got to maybe like five in the morning. I wasn't any closer to falling asleep and I could literally not think of another thing to pray for. And so I was kind of like eager beaver, like, okay, God, I'm ready for my next prayer assignment. And it was very convicting. He showed me like, okay, like <laughs> to paraphrase, like the heart behind what I felt the Lord saying was like, sweetie, you prayed for everything, but the one thing that I kind of want you to be thinking about <laughs> like I was using my prayers for others as a way to avoid having to think about Scott and my spiritual confusion and where was I going to go from here and it just it turned into oh okay like I thought it was going to be like wow seven hours non-stop way to go I'm like nope <laughs> it was kind of the exact opposite and he's like okay what I want you to do now is like thank you for praying that was great like kind of like the little top like you pat him on the head <laughs> like nice job but actually here's really why I woke you up and what I really want to wow. talk to you about oh and so goodness. again it turned into I could have been really prideful 
And I'm like, oh, but actually, God, I, I forgot I haven't prayed for any missionary in China yet. And I haven't prayed for missionaries in India either, <laughs> you know, but instead it was, again, an act of faith to stop praying for the things I thought I was supposed to be praying for and really just, I didn't pray for my relationship with Scott. I basically just had to sit and acknowledge before God that I was really broken and confused. Yeah. Way harder than spending seven hours praying for random people as it came into my mind. But that is such a good illustration of what our posture needs to be. Yeah. In, you know, and just mm -hmm. how, yeah, how important it is to make room to listen and invite mm -hmm. God into your prayer life, which yeah. is so funny that, but, but mm -hmm. you can have, you know, look at the Pharisees, you know, oh, yeah. they sat mm -hmm. up there and they probably, you know, pray and pray and pray about all yep. these different things or, you know, but just this idea that our prayer list not our mm -hmm. relationship with God but our prayer list can become an idol it and it can be a source of pride and it can be mm -hmm. devoid of God it could be all us and I'm not saying that yeah. your prayers were devoid no, of God I, but I think we can sometimes we don't want to address the real real issues right. so we're going to pull out a piece of paper and go through the motions it's right. kind of like um, a husband and wife who like are going through something horrific mm. right and instead of talking about that they're like oh well let me read you the shopping list and then they think that because they spent 20 minutes reading a shopping list to their spouse that they've had a connection and that their relationship is okay yeah 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 so yeah definitely important to exercise that that white space or that yeah that that silence and that mm -hmm. seeking god's mm -hmm involvement in our prayer lives yeah and actually i keep going back to what you're talking about like home styles i think that we can look at how we have set up our home yeah and figure out what that might tell us about our prayer lives like for me i i do kind of go by am i kind of typical millennial yeah i don't want lots of stuff on the walls i want white space literally um mm -hmm. and that's important for me in my prayer life i don't want it to be um be like that one night where it's just i'm going to go pray from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing i want there to be breathing room mm -hmm. um can you think of anything in your in your home that can tell you something about your prayer personality I think somewhat of the same. I do not like, I, I, I would say that I cannot have, like I had a friend that helped me organize when we were in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that she told me is every time you have like a, a surface mm -hmm. that you create in your home, it invites clutter. It does. And so like for me, I, I really don't like, and it's true everywhere that's flat pretty much is a mm -hmm. place where people put things. So yeah, I don't like that. I don't like having that. I have it mm -hmm. a lot, but I don't enjoy that. And so mm -hmm. I do like having fewer things out and my yeah. clutter threshold is very low. I, mm -hmm. I can't maintain things, knickknacks and things. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. have a curio cabinet, which my boomer mom got me when I got married <laughs> and so uh -huh. and it has been handy to put some things that are important and mm -hmm. I have her china closet also mm -hmm. but I'm gonna be really honest in some ways those things are a burden there are conferences they mm -hmm. are which I love the fact that I have yeah the things that remind me of her and yeah you know, in the China closet, which a lot of the things belonged to her. Yeah. And then the thing in the curio cabinet that has things that I'll display mm -hmm. like little pottery things my kids have yeah. made or things that people have given me. But in general, flat space, I do not enjoy having that covered. And so mm -hmm. I think my clutter threshold as well as my threshold for prayer and the number of things that mm -hmm. I can have at a given time. Yeah. Um, definitely is low and mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. think that's because focus is challenging sometimes for me mm -hmm. and so yeah i just i need to have that time to focus on one thing at a time yeah yeah i know for me when i'm in a i'm in a place like not cluttered in a messy sense but cluttered and then like there's stuff on every single wall mm -hmm. every single shelf mm -hmm. um i do get a tiny bit of like this is a noisy environment do you know what i mean like it's it's harder yeah. to 
to really think like, I don't, I don't get inspired by interiors of those super fancy cathedrals where it's all stained glass and it's all gold. And it's, you know, like to me, it's a, it's a little gaudy and distracting. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, like the interior of just like a a well-kept country church (laughs) with lots of empty space to me, that's more inviting, but you know, let's, let's also say like, there's, there's nothing wrong with the other ways either, you know? So especially um, a non-prayer takeaway, I think is like moms don't pick on your daughters for how they do their homes. Don't pick on your Mm daughters-in-law. Similarly, like daughters and daughters-in-law don't look at how your mom does it and be like, you know, why does she keep all this stuff around? It's just, it's totally different. Um, But yeah, I, I would encourage everybody to go through that. Think about your, um, your home interior or think about like how you would set it up if you had the time and the energy and the bu- budget, like what kind mm-hmm. of aesthetic are you drawn toward right. and use that as a springboard. Like, what does this tell me about my personality? And then how can that actually impact my prayer life? So, you know, if you kind of like that Gen Z look where it's super colorful and there's things everywhere, like all the walls have things, what does that tell you? And how can that actually help your prayer life? I think that can be a really neat tip or trick. Um, or like I said, think about the aesthetic that you would find the most inviting. Cause like I, other than like my plants, I don't, I don't decorate my house. Like to me, that's like, nope. A house is to live in and feel cozy in. But when I'm like on Pinterest looking at pretty pictures, I really like that. I know we've never quite remember how to say the word, but that Scandinavian kind of cozy, like it's all, you yeah. know, it's wicker baskets and blankets and fireplaces. And it's that cozy feel. That's what I feel aesthetically drawn toward. And so that helps me to be like, okay, so when I come into my own prayer closet, even if it doesn't look that way around me, what I'm going for is a sense of comfort, of safety, right, feeling. of I am warm. Um, I love waking up in the winter and staying under the covers for 20 minutes, just getting ready mentally for the day. Yeah, some of that looks like active prayer. Some of that just looks like resting in God's presence because mm-hmm. that's what I feel drawn towards. So I think that that's a good exercise for all of us to think about either how you have set up your home or what kind of aesthetic does appeal to you most and be like, okay, what does that tell me about how I could set up my prayer life to look one degree closer to matching my personality than to just trying to pray like I think I'm meant to pray? Yeah, I think that's great advice. Just, you know, another example of introspection and knowing yourself helps you Mm -hmm. to live out your prayer life and walk it out in a way that suits you and yeah you can thrive in instead of looking Mm -hmm. around and being like oh I wish I had that house or that house or I wish I had that system and then Mm -hmm. trying to Mm -hmm. you know exactly yeah yeah I mean a lot of people they hate love slash hate Facebook and Instagram because all the pictures are super pretty and super polished and they can leave you feeling less than Mm -hmm. I would encourage you find those kinds of pictures that you're drawn toward and ask yourself like what is it tell me about what I what I want what what emotions do I want do you really want to be that like supermodel kind of look probably not but maybe there's something maybe you just want to feel more confident in yourself maybe you want to feel happier because these people look so happy like go deeper than just berating yourself Mm -hmm. for feeling drawn to a certain thing and go deeper than just hating people because they're posting pictures that look phony and do you know what I mean and really ask yourself okay like I remember once Jamie I'm sorry for calling you out but you you mentioned like there was a certain season where you stopped following certain like of those like real homeschool mom accounts that are like very, very wholesome because it made you feel a little less than, do you want to, is that the right way to put it? Or do you want to, is that, did I explain that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, I, and, and I have several good friends that are, that have some great accounts that are Mm -hmm. very, um, 
like have great information that I actually am following again. Yeah. But yeah. there was a short was season. season. I think mm-hmm. it was during COVID maybe when I was yeah. homeschooling everybody. Where none and of us were in our best. Feeling like I was doing a horrible yeah. job. And every yeah. time something would pop up, I'd be like, it, instead of encouraging, I felt yeah. kind of, I felt less than. Yeah. And so yeah. I just, I, I, I didn't even stop following necessarily. I just stopped looking at those things. Stop fixating on fixating, it. And, fixating yeah. on them. Um, and now this is kind of a testament to my personality. I'm homeschooling one kid mm-hmm. and still feeling like I'm not doing the best, but I gain encouragement and ideas from those same exactly. people. Yeah. <laughs> and so and again, it's less overwhelming right yeah. now. So I feel like, oh, maybe I could implement some of that stuff right, and right. become better. But before I was yeah. so overwhelmed, I didn't think exactly. I could. Or you could even just ask, so, okay, why, why did this type of post trigger me? Um, and what does it tell me about my deep desires? My deep desire is to have a homeschool day that looks really structured. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then go deeper than that. Why? Because you want that sense of um, peace and calm because you want your kids to be academically successful. And then you get to say, okay, and now how do I make this work for me? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think that that's a really good way, you know, as you're yeah, most of us are on some kind of social media as you're going through that. Ask yourself, what does this tell me about me? Um, you know, if you were to look at somebody's Facebook or Instagram feed, you would learn a lot about them because you would see the kinds of posts. Like <laughs> what you'd learn about me is I really like cute animal videos and have <laughs> no problem. Like if, if you promise me a picture of a really cute dog doing something hilarious, I'm going to watch it and I'll probably watch the ads to get to it. What does that say about me? And then how can I take that? into something for my prayer life right so yeah yeah i think that's good you have anything else i feel like that kind of no this has been long ish one but really fun discussion yeah all righty so as a reminder you can go to prayingchristianwalk.com slash partner to join our new patreon And this is going to help support what we're doing here at the show. In addition, you get some chapters as we get them ready for our new book that's coming out. And once a month, you get to request one of my Christian fiction novels. And I think there's something like 40. So it's going to, you've got a lot of reading ahead of you if you want to go through that catalog. Um, Yeah, you could start with the Kennedy Stern series and get to know Sandy, who we've been talking about. And let's go ahead and leave you with our blessing and benediction. May God grow in you a heart of gratitude so that in everything you will give thanks. May you rejoice when you're enjoying plenty and rejoice when you're suffering want. May your prayer be constantly seasoned with gratitude so that you truly do enter his gates with thanksgiving. May your heart rejoice in God who richly supplies us with all that we need and grants us his abundant blessings. And our benediction is from 2 Corinthians 13 verse 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you.